So in this video I want to show you a couple of methods that I actually use here in the lab when it comes to RF shielding. Now what I've got here in front of me is a couple of products off eBay. Uh, this one here is a really cheap Wi-Fi dongle. You find this uh, type of board in the uh, Cassens Wi-Fi adapters, the Signal King Wi-Fi adapters, that sort of thing. But uh, here at the side I've got a little uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, signal source that you can use on a uh, spectrum analyzer as a uh, reference source so what I'm actually going to do is put uh, RF shielding on both of these because this little uh, uh, signal source in particular uh, it uh, is quite noisy without a uh, RF shielding on there so I found that uh, actually adding RF shielding to one of these brings the uh, noise floor down considerably but again not adding any kind of uh, RF shielding on these products just bring the uh, price point down for the people that are selling it and also on the uh, cheap little Wi-Fi cards like this one there is no way that the manufacturers put in uh, for any kind of regulative testing say for the uh, FCC and such like so they're not really too worried about uh, how much uh, excessive noise one of these puts out and of course you know adding uh, some RF shielding does cut down on that noise and uh, in theory at least it should make uh, one of these little uh, Wi-Fi cards actually perform a little bit better and a little bit more stable by having some uh, RF shielding on there. But of course you can always uh, open up uh, more expensive brand name Wi-Fi cards and uh, they won't have uh, RF shielding on. It just depends uh, you know, when they put it through testing if they don't actually need it. Obviously they won't uh, put it on because it does save quite a lot of money. Now as for the uh, metal to actually make these uh, little uh, RF shielding enclosures, what I uh, use is uh, reclaimed metal from uh, cookie tins and sweet tins. And especially at this time of year, you should have uh, a few lying around that you can actually utilize or save uh, in the corner of your lab to, for when you actually need it. Now on this piece of metal here I've already cleaned it up and got rid of all the varnish etc but uh, if you're not planning on using it straight away I would actually leave all that paint and varnish on there because it does actually protect the tin from the elements so a little bit of damp and uh, a little bit of moisture and uh, this tin will soon rust. So first of all then I'm going to make a uh, little RF can for this uh, noise source here so I've already cut out a section of the uh, tin itself now you can just use scissors if you're going to use uh, cookie tin or sweet tins it's uh, really quite thin and it cuts quite nicely with a pair of scissors but uh, to actually uh, cut this out and get the measurements what I did I actually placed the noise source on top of the tin itself and uh, drew around the noise source itself and just added four millimeters onto each side so we've got this uh, nice margin all the way around the uh, noise source itself. So I've already prepared the uh, piece of tin then by actually uh, sanding it down and getting rid of all the original varnish and paint and uh, as you can see here what I've done on this side I've actually sprayed it with some matte black spray paint and that's because I'm actually going to be scoring the uh, marks where I'm going to be bending and cutting rather than using a uh, marker pen I just find it a lot easier if you score directly onto the tin itself as you would if you were say bending cardboard the uh, method is uh, not that much different from that so what you want to do is place it in the middle of the tin and uh, get something that's quite sharp you can use a bradawl or a, a large nail and just sharpen up the end and uh, what I'm actually going to do is just score all the way around the PCB to give me a little line where that's going to indicate where to actually bend this so I've got my side wall out of the tin itself and I just find it a lot better as I say by actually doing this by scoring it. So now that I've got the actual outline scored onto the black paint there what I'm actually going to do now is use my ruler to actually straighten this up a little bit but also add a little bit more pressure to those lines as well so I'm actually scoring it quite uh, firmly because uh, it's the same method as you would use for actually bending cardboard so I'm going to use my ruler now just to get it uh, a lot neater 
on these sides and actually put quite a bit of pressure on there as well. That's why I've got this piece of wood on the bench now as well. And now that I'm using the ruler as well to score the line, I'm actually scoring right from uh, one edge to the other edge all the way down like that. So now I'm just going to flip it round and actually do the same on this line all the way from the top down to the bottom and then each one of these sides as well. So now that I've got all the sides scored so I can actually bend those sides up with some pliers, I'm actually going to score just around the side of this uh, SMA connector here. Because this has got a fixed SMA connector, I'm actually going to score around here and actually cut that piece out so it actually fits and runs over the top of the SMA connector here. Now before you actually start bending the side walls of this, what you're going to need to do is actually put a uh, small cut, again just using scissors, on the little corner tabs here and just stop roughly where this line is here because what we can do is when we get our side walls actually bent down and we've built it up at the sides here this uh, little tab can actually fold down and back round uh, the corner here and uh, it'll make contact with this part of the shielding and we can actually solder this directly to this part and we get a much neater corner by doing that so now that we've bent this side wall, it's a lot easier to actually next bend the opposite side wall, mainly because of these uh, little tabs that I've left on in the corners there. But uh, one thing I did actually forget to cut out here is uh, the power line for this little uh, noise source. It does need six volts to actually work. So I've put a little uh, cut out here so I can actually solder the power lines onto the board and then what I can do is actually bend this down over the uh, power lines right at the end just so it's got as much RF shielding as possible. So I'm going to start bending these opposite walls now and uh, what I've done I've just moved the tabs out slightly so they don't get in the way of me bending this wall here and I've also uh, scratched off some of the matte paint there so I can solder the tabs directly onto this wall here now because I'm just using the matte paint to make my marks so it shows up better on camera you probably won't have to uh, use matte paint when you put your marks in there but because I have I just need to scrape a little bit of that away just to actually solder it on there so we're now actually ready to attach the can to this uh, little uh, signal source here now I've already wired up the positive and negative leads so they come out of that little uh, cut out there but uh, something else that I want to point out now the uh, profile of this little noise source with the components on there is uh, not very high at all but uh, something I like to do is uh, use some double sided foam tape now I've cut out a uh, couple of different sections here so we've got four nice uh, actual corners if you like or pillars to actually rest on and uh, I've only used one layer of the foam if uh, this had more components on there with a higher profile for instance I'd probably lay you know two or three layers of the foam to get a little bit more height there but uh, because it's so low this should be fine so the can itself the uh, top of the can on the inside will just sit on these uh, little foam spaces if you like so then there's no danger of uh, shorting out any of the uh, components in this at all. So I've got the RF can on this little noise source here but I haven't fixed it down yet. Now what I've actually done, I've uh, pushed the noise source down so it's making contact with the uh, uh, double sided foam there. And again the double sided foam means I don't have to worry about uh, pushing this down too far and shorting out the components. So uh, what I've actually done now once it's in place, I uh, use the uh, bottom part of the uh, PCB board here as a guide to help me on to, to uh, cut notches in uh, all the sides there and uh, what that's going to allow me to do now is I can bend these over onto uh, the bottom ground plane of this uh, PCB and actually solder them in place. So the shield is all soldered in place now and something you have to be careful of is uh, the amount of heat that can build up on the shield and this ground plane here as you're actually soldering. So what I do is uh, I do one side first and then let it cool down and then do the opposite side and same again with the other two sides. Otherwise 
this ground plane gets really really hot and uh, what can happen is of course is the uh, components on the opposite side can actually start uh, falling off the PCB because there's that so much heat transferred through this uh, ground plane so just be really careful of that and also to tidy it up a little bit as well I've just got the Dremel tool and just ground down the sides here just smoothing out that solder just to make it look neater now a second method that you can use to actually uh, attach an RF cam to a device here I've got a uh, cheap Wi-Fi dongle you can get these off uh, eBay pretty cheap less than a tenner and uh, as you can see it doesn't come with any kind of RF shielding but uh, what I've actually done I've made this uh, little can for it and uh, just prior to me actually bending the sides down I took a one millimeter drill bit and drilled these uh, vertical lines of holes in the top here only because the uh, components underneath this actually get a little bit warm a lot warmer than the uh, little uh, signal generator that I've just done so uh, that's the reason why I've drilled holes in there now to attach the uh, RF cam to this device I'm not actually going to attempt to solder it in place because uh, even though we've got the track around here some of these uh, components are actually quite close and the heat could actually transfer and uh, you could actually end up breaking your device but uh, we've got some little uh, hole tags already cut out in uh, this uh, particular Wi-Fi dongle and what I'm going to do is uh, pass some wire through these holes and actually tie it on around the back there and solder it in place. Now something else that I've done to the can in relation to actually making it for this device we've got a uh, track coming out there with some components attached and then uh, connecting to the antenna itself so just to be uh, really sure that I don't short anything out I've just cut a notch in the can there so it fits over the top of the track itself. So I'm just going to use this wire then to actually uh, tie down the uh, shield directly to the device itself and I'm using this quite thin uh, electrical wire here that I've got in the lab it's a solid core and I'm just uh, stripping away the uh, PVC sleeve off it. So that's the RF can held in place by these two wires it's on there quite firmly you'd really have to give it some force to actually push that out of the way it's just a lot safer than actually soldering it directly to the uh, board itself and uh, here at the back I've just trimmed away any excess wire so it looks quite a, a neat little job and of course doing uh, this method it'd be really easy to remove this at a uh, future date if you wanted to so here I've got a uh, little uh, Wi-Fi module for an Arduino the kind of thing you can pick up cheap nowadays on eBay and uh, you can actually add shielding to one of these it's a little bit more trickier but um, a couple of years ago a student of mine he put a uh, project together where he was actually controlling three lights using uh, little Bluetooth modules and it kept actually uh, not working the signal kept dropping out intermittently and quite regularly and we actually tracked it down in the end to uh, each one of the Bluetooth modules actually interfering with each other so we put some shielding around it and uh, that actually sorted it out and he passed his exam but uh, you can actually add shield into one of these quite easily with some uh, heat shrink tubing and aluminium cooking foil. So I'm going to use two pieces of heat shrink tubing with some aluminium cooking foil sandwiched in between. So I've got my uh, first piece of uh, heat shrink tubing here cut and I've just measured it to that first row of those uh, header pins there and the uh, start of the antenna itself because we don't want to actually cover that. So this one's going to go on first, I'm going to shrink it down. Basically, basically this first one is just to insulate the components from the aluminium cooking foil. So I've cut a strip of the aluminium foil here and I've cut it slightly narrower than the heat shrink tube in itself so we've got a bit of isolation on either end here. Now you could also use this sticky backed copper tape that I've used in previous videos it doesn't cost that much off eBay but what I'm going to do I'm not going to use any glue with the aluminium foil and uh, I've got it uh, a fairly longish length here so I'm just going to wrap it around just like you would a bandage I'm not going to use any glue to hold it in place just the second piece of heat shrink tubing around there just to uh, hold it down So that's the aluminium foil in place and I'm just going to shrink this second piece of heat shrink tubing over the top of that just to hold it all in place. 
So that's three different methods then to actually add RF shield into uh, products that uh, don't have it and you will find that uh, products at the uh, lower end of the scale uh, don't tend to have something like RF shielding. It does cost the manufacturer quite a bit of money to actually uh, make and uh, add little uh, RF shields like these at the manufacturing process. But, uh, you know, if you do find you're having problems with uh, actually getting your little uh, Arduino project to work, for instance, then RF shielding can uh, help sort that problem out. Not always, but uh, it does tend to be a uh, shielding problem, especially if you're using more than one uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module in uh, close proximity. So if you did find this uh, video useful, then please give a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.